<laughs> the NBA season's over. So what's Charles Barkley up to? I'm going to buy some drinks for y'all. And I'm going to buy Bud Light. Hey, and let me tell you something. All you rednecks are who don't want to drink Bud Light. y'all. What happened to Sir Charles? The minute he signs with CNN, he turns into Don Lemon? But Bud Light, nothing compared to Disney. Remember the classic Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? Disney is making the fairy tale more inclusive. How are they doing it? They're firing six of the seven dwarves. I'm not sure the dwarves are thrilled with how inclusive Disney is now that they're out of a job. I guess Disney thought dwarves were offensive, so now none of them are allowed to work. And a lot of Disney characters look different. You remember Cinderfella. Our next guest is a former LGBTQ activist. She was a part of a group promoting the queer agenda to communities and schools. Until she realized she didn't like what was going on. And now she's become a deprogrammer, helping parents and children understand the agenda that they were injected with. And the radical activists don't like it. The deprogrammer, Kay Yang, joins me now. So when you were teaching these communities and these schools, what kind of bells went off when you said, wait a second, something doesn't sit right with me? Well, thank you so much for having me on the show tonight, Jesse. Yeah, so it was actually in the early 2010s that I was a programmer at an LGBT nonprofit. I was brought on as an outreach and education coordinator and of course, at the time, I was so excited to be a young person, to find a job that I thought was helping to bring valuable resources to community members. And unbeknownst to me at the time, my role was less about helping to protect vulnerable people from discrimination and more about being a young, bubbly face to put on the front of a massive marketing campaign that was attempting to gain roots in my own community and talented young people are being weaponized against their own interests. That's what happened to me. I was sent to local area schools to work with local businesses and organizations and lead cultural sensitivity trainings. And we would teach people these new vocabulary words in gender identity ideology. And I had no idea at the time that this new terminology was the language of female erasure that would be used to take away my own sex-based rights. What other things was behind the agenda, in your estimation? Well, you know, back then, 10 years ago, the idea of a trans kid was unheard of. The children that I was working with were in their teen years. And it was later, after working at the LGBT Center, I came to understand that what we were doing there was really paving the way for the creation and acceptance of the trans child. I was totally oblivious to the fact that I was being used as a Trojan horse because behind this message of inclusivity and kindness for everyone, there's a really sinister agenda to normalize these policies and practices that cause irreversible medical damage to healthy children and undermine the sex-based rights of women and girls. So um, part of my responsibility at the LGBT Center was helping to collate and complete program-wide reports that were required by our funders at the New York State Department of Health. And the more teens that we would have to report an LGBT identity, that meant we would receive more funding that could be used for what I believe are public indoctrination initiatives led under the guise of LGBT health and human services. Oh, I always follow the money. It always comes yes. back to that. Kay, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have you back. Thank you, Jesse. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.